Okay, welcome back to part three of this tutorial. In this part, I'll be discussing some data tracks that are off by default, but may be of great interest to you as you do your research. These tracks include uh, tracks that catalog the dbSNP database, tracks that have information about clinical genetics and copy number variation, access to literature reviews, protein PFAM domains, and how to see codon numbering in the gen code track. So you can see here in the genome browser that I have displayed some tracks that are different than what are normally turned on. I did that by going to hide all, hiding everything and then only turning those back on that I wanted to have back on. That includes the gen code genes. I've turned on PFAM domains ClinGen CNVs and ClinVar variants under phenotype and literature, and I've turned on three SNP tracks under variation: uh, Common SNPs 144, All SNPs, and Multi SNPs. And actually, this should be All SNPs 144. So I'll hide that, and I'll find All SNPs 144, and say refresh. 144 refers to the version of the dbSNP database. So you want to make sure you're looking at the same version across tracks. Okay, so let's start now looking at the dbSNP tracks in detail. dbSNP is a database of SNPs and what UCSC does here for you is break it down into subtracks so you can understand which are the common SNPs and which are, are rare. So as I mentioned before there's a track called common SNPs. These are SNPs that have greater than 1% uh, minor allele frequency and I'm showing that track. I have the dbSNP track uh, common SNPs displayed in pack mode, and you can see that each SNP has its RS number associated with it. Most of them are not colored, they're intronic, the uh, the more common ones, although there are some that are blue that are in the 3' prime and 5' prime UTR region. Below that, in the dense view, I have the all SNPs track. This is all of the SNPs in the dbSNP database, and you can see that if we were to zoom in on one exon of SOD1, which I'll do now, it may be a little bit difficult to see, but the common SNPs track is a subset of the all SNPs track. So let's go ahead and zoom in on one exon and take a closer look. Okay, so now in the all SNPs track, you can see that uh, rare SNPs that are located within this exon, which is exon 2 of 5, some of those are non-synonymous coding SNPs, and some are synonymous coding SNPs. Those are in green, and the more deleterious are in red. You can see that the common SNPs track has no SNPs reported in this region. It does have a SNP here that is intronic and is also found in all SNPs. Multi-SNPs are SNPs that are mapping in more than one place on the reference. It's useful to know about these because you don't want to select these SNPs if you're trying to do a genome-wide association study. Because they show up in more than one place, you won't be able to get a statistically meaningful association. Now we can zoom in on a particular SNP. If we go in a little bit further. Now I've displayed the RS numbers and I can click through and get some information about that particular SNP. You have the dbSNP number, the position, the summary and the strand, and the allele frequencies. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out a bit. So we're looking at exon 2 here. Note as well that in the gen code track you can actually see the amino acid codes. Now I want to draw your attention to the uh, ClinGen CN CNVs track. These are clinically associated, experimentally verified by microarray copy number variations. That's this track in green. Red represents a pathogenic uh, loss. So this particular CNV covering this area is a pathogenic loss. There are also likely pathogenic, unknown, likely benign, and benign, and those have different colors, and you can click through to learn more about that. If we look below that at this, these two tracks here, ClinVar variants and ClinVar variants CNVs only, 
You can see uh, variants that are in the ClinVar database. These are variants that are associated with genetic disorders. Uh, in this top part of the track, you have variants only, and you can see that when you're zoomed in this far, it tells you what the variants are at each position. And if you hover over them, it'll tell you something about uh, what they do. In this case, this one, this particular G to A is pathogenic. Below that are the CNV tracks, and if I were to zoom in further, you could hover over these and it would tell you uh, what the consequence is, but the color coding can do that as well, so you see that blue are benign and red are pathogenic. Finally, I want to look at the gene reviews track. I turn this one on as well, and it is not on by default, but it's very useful because if you want to learn more about your gene of interest, you can click through on gene reviews, and if there is a review for that gene, it is available here. In this case, it's an ALS overview. Also, I wanted to mention a track for people that are structural biologists or interested in protein structure and function, and that is the PFAM domains track. I'm showing that here, right under the GenCode genes. PFAM domains are a database of uh, known 3D structural domains in proteins, and if you want to know what domains your gene contains, you can turn this on. In this case, we can click through and see that it contains the SOD copper binding domain. You can link out to this PFAM family and it'll tell you that it's a copper zinc superoxide dismutase and give you some information about the 3D structure, etc, etc. Finally, I want to describe how to turn on numbering in the gen code tracks. So I'm going to zoom in again. Now we're zoomed in uh, very far, and I'm going to right click and say configure. And then I'm going to select show code on numbering and say OK. Now, if we zoom in one more time, we should be close enough in to see the code on numbering. Let's go in twice. Okay, now you can see that each code on and each amino acid is numbered. Uh, you can see that the two gen code transcripts have different numbers because of the truncation in the second transcript. And what this allows you to do is to evaluate where in a transcript uh, a particular amino acid is located. For example, here you can see that GLY42 in the top transcript becomes GLY23. This is useful when you are either re doing research or writing a paper and trying to specify exactly where in the protein an effect is occurring. Uh, you need to be aware of the different numbers depending on the dis different isoforms of that transcript. So that's all for part three.